In today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about underrated fragrances that I feel deserve more hype. So if you wanna find out more, then please do keep on watching. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you're visiting. Thank you so much for joining me today. As I already mentioned in the intro, today's video is going to be all about underrated fragrances that I personally feel deserve more hype. Now this is just my opinion, but I think these fragrances are truly special and don't get talked about enough. So without further ado, let's get started on the first fragrance. And this first fragrance has absolutely blown me away. It could be my best discovery of 2023 so far. Oof, that's a big statement for me. However, it did shock me that much. And the fragrance in question is called Osmanthus in a Major by the Cologne House Cairo. Now, I didn't know about this fragrance house until Ahmed shared a story of, I think it's called Ginger in a Major on his Instagram account. I'm gonna link his account in the description box below, but he creates really incredible content and always has the best recommendations. And he said to me, he was like, Hayley, I think you will really like Osmanthus in a Major. So here we are. And wow, he clearly knows my taste because Osmanthus in a Major is truly spectacular. And for the price point, I do not feel like you can beat this quality. And I know that's a very bold statement, but that is truly how I feel. So as the name suggests, of course, there is Osmanthus in this fragrance, followed by a very juicy pineapple note. There's some tea, there's some neroli, it has a little bit of tuberose, there's some white musk, and a very interesting note of chalk, which I am not sure if I perceive that chalk. I think it just gives it a slight powdered, slightly grounded, earthy feel. I don't know. I don't know if I perceive it or not. However, I definitely do perceive the Osmanthus, and it is so so beautifully done within this composition. It's a little bit milky, apricot-like, smells teeny bit like jam, but I would say this one definitely has a woody nuance to it. And then you're getting a very, very ripe pineapple note in here. It's so juicy, followed by that tea note, which isn't super prominent, but it cuts through a little bit of that sweetness up top. It could be like an apricot and pineapple jam to me. Cut through with that tea. I am getting the neroli in here. I don't get the tuberose, which is probably a good thing for me because tuberose can be hit or miss. Now, of course it's in here, but it's not front stage and center, which is a happy day for me. And then you've got the musk, which is really grounding it. And I feel like I maybe can get that chalky note, but I don't know if it's in my head now. And there's definitely a woodiness to this fragrance. You get quite a ballsy dry down. It really does last on my skin. And for the price point, I think the longevity is excellent. This is $84 for 100 ml. And I can't wait to try out more fragrances from this house. I've only had this about three days and I am that excited about it that I had to put it in this video. But if you like Osmanthus, specifically that apricot jammy Osmanthus, that's a little bit woody. You like the sound of pineapple with a slight nuance of tea. There's the neroli, there's the musk. Then I would highly recommend getting a sample of Osmanthus in a major. They do have discovery sets. Now I shared this on my Instagram yesterday, maybe the day before, and it was on my Instagram stories, just stating that it was one of my favorite new discoveries of the year. So the Cologne House reached out to me and they asked if I would like a 15% off discount code to share with you. 
And just to caveat that, that's a 15% off discount code for you, but I do not earn any commission on it. It's just so you can save a little bit more money on their fragrances or the discovery set. And to be honest, their fragrances are already at a great price point, but thank you to the Clone House for offering this 15% off discount code. Now, Ahmed has tried Ginger in a Major and he speaks so highly of it that I know that is the next fragrance I need to get a bottle of. I'm about to go on a two week honeymoon, but I will be ordering it towards the end of that honeymoon so it arrives for when I get back because I'm so excited to try it. But Osmanthus in a Major is 100% such an underrated gem. I think I've only ever seen one person speak about it on YouTube, which was Sebastian, the perfume guy. So I highly recommend this one. And now I will move on to the next fragrance. The next fragrance is from Room 1015. And this fragrance is 1015. And I think I've only seen one person speak about this on YouTube, which was Gabby from Gabby Loves Perfumes. And I feel like this is a really underrated gem from the house. You'll probably know if you watch my channel that I love Cherry Punk and Sonic Flower from Room 1015. But when I saw the notes of this one and I had a sample of it first, like just a little two mil sample, and this one really stood out to me because it's a very strong sandalwood dominant fragrance. And I would say this is more of a dry sandalwood fragrance and not a creamy sandalwood fragrance. You also have prominent notes of violet and mandarin. But to be honest, I mostly get the sandalwood and the sandalwood is very, very prominent as I've already mentioned. And it's almost got a slightly vintage woody smell to it. I don't know how to explain that. Very, very realistic, but you have to love your sandalwood to enjoy this. The violet, I think, is what's giving it that vintagey feeling. It's slightly powdered, but I wouldn't call this a powdery fragrance. And I only get a really, really small amount of that mandarin. It's quite linear in terms of being a linear woody fragrance. There is a little bit of smokiness that comes from this composition. However, it's not listed anywhere within the notes. It's almost like smoked sandalwood. And then I do perceive a slightly spicy saffron note in here too. Really, really interesting composition. I pick out little bits of nuances from Rosendo Mateo's number no. five, which is a fragrance that I don't personally enjoy that much because for me, the saffron's a little bit too heavy in there and it pulls a little bit rubbery. Whereas this is a very kind of tame version of it, slightly musky in the dry down. It's a little bit rebellious, perfectly unisex. I would highly recommend getting a sample of this one if you like the sound of the notes. I just feel like it has a real unique quality to it that I can't quite pinpoint. And it just performs extremely well on my skin and I have been really, really loving it, which is why I feel like it is an underrated gem. The next fragrance is from Theodorus Calatini's and it is Coffee Addict. And I might be living under a rock, but I feel like I haven't seen that many people speak about this one. Again, I've seen Gabby speak about this one and I actually purchased this one from Gabby's new store, My Perfect Scent. However, I feel like this deserves a lot more hype than I've seen. I don't know, this is just my personal view because this smells like tiramisu to my nose. And again, it's a very literal gourmand. So you have to enjoy that type of fragrance. Very sweet, very sticky, very dessert-like. It's got cacao, it's got coffee, it's got caramel. And it's just giving me tiramisu. Again, lasts a really long time on the skin. I wore this one yesterday. Oh, I just think this one is so, so good. And in one of my recent videos, I spoke about lemon tart also from this house. And there's just some magic done where they capture or he captures the essence of gourmand or desserts. 
And it's got one of the most realistic coffee notes that I've smelled, but it's a very sweet coffee. Think latte with caramel syrup, or maybe a caramel coffee frappuccino, that kind of vibe. And James sampled this one yesterday too, and he was like, wow, that is one of the best coffee scents that you have in your collection. And I was like, yeah. You are right, James. It is one of the best coffee fragrances that I now have in my collection, but you have to like it sweet. So if you are looking for a very sweet coffee fragrance that smells like coffee and caramel, then check out Coffee Addict because if you're a gourmand lover, I do not feel like this one will disappoint you. And it is also at a great price point. The next fragrance is from Tiziana Terenzi, and this one is Borea. I can see my fingerprints on this bottle and it really annoys me, but Borea is such a beautiful, almondy, coconutty, floral fragrance. Super intoxicating, super delicious. I feel like this is turning into a gourmand video here, but I feel like this one is very underrated from the house. It's a very loud fragrance. And I feel like that's what Tiziana Terenzi does really well. They're kind of loud in your face fragrances. They're definitely not for the faint of heart, but if you like the sound of an almondy, coconutty, floral fragrance, I think you would really like Borea. The almond is definitely front stage and center, but then I am getting lots of coconut milk mixed in with some pear, plum, and freesia, and I'm definitely getting that freesia note. And I always perceive freesia to be a little bit watery and dewy, which fits in really nicely with that coconut milk vibe. It's kind of like a beachy, almondy floral scent but loud, very, very strong. You're definitely gonna get noticed wearing this one. It's a little bit powdered, but not too much. It's very vanillic too. I'm hoping you can't see the fingerprints because I'm putting fingerprints all over this bottle. But Borea, I don't see spoken about as much as some of the other fragrances from Tiziana Terenzi. And this is the kind of scent profile that I just really, really enjoy. I love almond in fragrances and I love coconut in fragrances. There is some musk and sandalwood in the base and lots of vanilla as I've already mentioned. And if I was to compare it to one fragrance, which you know I don't like doing, but I wanna give you a little bit of a reference point. It reminds me a little bit of Dior Hypnotic Poison. However, this one has a lot more coconut in it, a lot more florals, quite a lot more beast mode in projection. So if that is the type of scent profile you like, I would highly recommend checking out Borea by Tiziana Terenzi. The next fragrance I've definitely mentioned a few times on my channel. However, I feel like it is one of the best from this house and it is none other than Amber Kanjar by Unui Nomad. This fragrance is exceptional to my nose. If you like your sweet, ambery fragrances that are a little bit spicy and almost a little bit dry, then you absolutely need to check out Amber at Kanja. It's got a really prominent plum note in here. Mm. This is so, so good. It's got this really unique DNA to it. I feel like it's a little bit Middle Eastern. You get the labdanum, there's lots of vanilla, there's the benzoin. I do pick out some cinnamon that's not listed. It feels a little bit more like there are some dry spices in here. It's sweet, it's sticky, so resinous. Oh, I just think it's incredible to be quite honest with you. This is more of an autumn winter fragrance depending where you live. It would be quite boisterous in the summertime. However, I've not tried it in the high heat. It could blossom, but because it's quite a spicy, sweet amber fragrance, I don't know how it would perform in the high heat, I'm just saying. But Amber of Kanjar is absolutely incredible. I would say it's an underrated gem. A few people do speak about this one. However, I feel like it deserves a lot more hype than it does get. And that is just my personal opinion because I feel like this is an exceptional 
composition at a great price point for the quality. Highly, highly, highly recommend getting a sample of Amber Kanjar if you like the sound of being a very sweet, spicy, vanillic amber. So yeah, I feel like this one is an underrated gem. Next up, we have Narcisse Taji by Atelier Materi. And this fragrance house does get some love, but maybe not as much as I feel like it deserves. And specifically this fragrance, Narcisse Taji, I feel like is a really unique fragrance composition. And it's not necessarily a composition that I would go for just because it is a pretty prominent tuberose fragrance. However, this is a spicy floral to my nose at the very least. In the opening, you have the tuberose. You also have a sweet, juicy pear, but then there is a very spicy ginger note that really cuts through that tuberose note for me and just smells incredible. This is a very, very sexy white floral in my opinion. Yeah, the ginger and the tuber. 